Module 9, Case 4, Step 11. I had some technical difficulties, so I had to come back. Um, in cell L18, we want to enter the income from the home sale using the value in cell B12. Now, if you named your cell like I did, you could just type in here equal FV and hit enter, and then it puts your value in for you. Yay! Um, in this one, uh, equal, and I named mine resale tax. Oh, that didn't work. There we go. And then um, for this one, it's just a simple subtraction. So you just say, because we named them, or because I named them, equal future value minus resale. I did that wrong. Equals future, okay, minus there you go. This is one of the values again of naming cells. So in step 12, in the range C22 to L22, determine the yearly net income by adding the after tax income to the resale net income. So we'll just, let's just, I froze the panes right here. So if you go to view, freeze panes, and you choose freeze first column. I'm not sure if mine's frozen or not, so let's see. Yeah, it's frozen. So now you can be able to see the titles all the way across. Um, so C22 to L22 yearly net income by adding after-tax income, so equals after-tax income plus resale net income, enter, and you'll see that there's nothing in those, so it's just carrying down the value, but you can still just follow directions and do what you would do if there were values in there, and just slide it all the way down and fill the formula. There you go. Step 13. In year zero, the company will... Okay, so we want to enter a negative cash value in projected cash flow. So B24, that's where we are. So I don't know why I have those in there, but let's get rid of them. Okay, so we want to equal a negative. So add the negative, And... Now, since I named mine, and mine I named PV, which, again, maybe not so smart since we have a formula named that. Double-click on it, enter, and it just puts in the negative value for you. I do love named cells. So now we want to calculate the cash flow for the rest of the years by adding the total net income in row 22 to the depreciation in row 11. So we'll go just do exactly what it says. Equals... plus row 11, enter, and we'll just grab it and fill it down. Come on, go up there. Okay, hold on, hold on. Nope, up here. Okay. Moving on to step 14 in the Home Info Worksheet. Do the following to analyze the profitability of this investment. Assume discount rate 10%. Net present value of the investment, which is going to be the initial expenditure, which is B24 of the financial statement. So we're going to go like this. Equals. And then we're going to go click on B24 of the financial statement because that's going to be the negative value. So even though we've named the cell, we could do it a couple different ways, but let's just do it this way. Plus NPV, and I know that you're seeing I have an error. I've seen it as well. NPV, and because I chose to name it the same name, which I should not have done. 
Okay. Tiffany, I've got too many parentheses up here already, I can say. See? So net present value rate. We're going to go back here to Home Info. Click on Assume Discount Rate, comma, to go to the next step, which is value one, all those things. So we're going to go back here, and we're going to choose, I think these values. Yep, 24. We're going to choose all these. And I realize that C is wrong. We're going to go ahead and do it, and I'm going to correct C in a second. That's one of those things about freezing panes that drives me crazy. Enter. Yes, accept the correction. So that's great, except for my value in C is wrong. Projected cash flow should not be that. That should not be negative. I, I didn't scroll. When I did the freeze panes, I guess I didn't scroll past this. So this should actually be what this is. So I wonder, if, can I fill it this way? I don't think I can. So it'll be C22 plus C11. There we go. Okay, so now if we do formula view just to verify what we got going on. Yeah, everything looks like it's the same, matches, good. Okay, so now your net present value looks like you're in the hole. Let me double check that. Okay, that's right. Now we'll go down to internal rate of return using cash flow values in the range okay so in cell B20 initial rate of returns is a formula it tells you about it in the textbook equals IRR oh internal rate yeah okay IRR and then the values and we're going to go over to the range B24 to L24. Enter. Okay, it says 8.8%. If that's what you got, you should be good. The only things we have to do here are the regular formatting things. And I would do this, and I would select this and center across selection. And so then if you take this and say control Y. and say control Y. It just does it. Um, I would, again, they should be bold. Maybe put them in boxes, maybe not. Depends. That's a personal preference. I think the more lines, the more confusing, but I would definitely make them bold. Let's see. Let's just see what that looks like. Let's zoom out. It's really good. Let's check this. Are we all in accounting? No, we are not. So we need to, the easiest way to do this is shift arrow down everything and then unclick the ones you don't want. So if you hold control and click on the percentage because you don't want those to go to accounting, those should be unselected now. And maybe unselect this one. Let's see what happens. Counting, decimal places zero, symbol zero, okay, oh, it did not work, okay, so I messed it all up, okay, so let's just do this, accounting, decimal places zero, symbol zero, say okay, and then if we highlight those and say control Y, it changes those as well. Control Y. Excellent. So now these should be in percentage. They are in percentage. And this should be just general. That's fine. A-OK -okay there. So now let's go over here. And let's make this a little, this view a little so we can see the whole page. Woo, that's smaller than we wanted.
No, don't do what I did. Make sure you scroll down the whole thing. Okay. Um, well, we do know that this is going to span this entire length now, so we can do the correct formatting. Actually, we might be able to control Y here. No, we can't. Okay, so now we'll just go format, format cells, center across selection. You guys should all be familiar with this, probably doing it in your sleep by now, right? So now we can take this and select those cells and control Y because it's the same number of width of cells. Um, I would make projected financial statements bigger. That's fine. I probably wouldn't do that format, but that's up to you. Um, control B, bold it. I would do this in Control B. I would also um, take where the totals are. Not projected cash flow, I don't think. Just the two totals. And I would go in so that it is set off. So it stands out a little better. Um, this one is also, yeah, it's kind of a subtotal. I don't know. I'd probably leave it. Bold, or maybe just bold the, yeah, it's up to you. It's, it's up to you. Maybe not bold these. I don't know. Whatever you choose. I'd probably play with it until I decided exactly what I wanted because I don't know right at this moment. This entire one should be bold and all totals. So everything, let's see. Oh, let's see. What do we got here? Formatting is wrong. So this should be, I'm going to take all the borders off. So in proper accounting format, so this is going to be your total expenses. But it's still a subtotal. It's not an actual total, so it doesn't need the top-down border. It's really a subtotal? Uh, I don't know. I'm going to check. So since pre-tax income is actually the total of that section, if this were on a real financial statement, I'm going to do the top and bottom double on that. So it'll look like that. And then on this one, I'm just going to put it above. And this, you have to do the whole thing, even if there's no values there. And since this is total, this is going to be a top-down, bottom-double. Top-down, sorry. Top and double, bottom border. And then this one's going to be the same. Control Y will work. So it should look like that. Now, the ones that have the bottom double, those should definitely always be bold. You can bold or unbold these, actually. The totals, definitely not. The headings, if you choose to, I like my headings bolded, but maybe not. That's a personal preference. There's no top down double there. So this has top down double. So um, Control B. Bold. Yeah, that's how mine would look. Um, because we took the dollar signs off, and I don't want to, I don't want to adjust any of the cells so that any of the cells have different um, cell addresses. I would put right here.
because we know it's U.S. dollars, but in order to be proper business form, we shouldn't assume that people will assume anything. We should tell them. It should be clear. So then if we take this and we go center cross selection again, It will not have changed any of your cell reference addresses because um, we didn't add any lines. We just put it in a line that was already there. I don't really like that. I would like my heading to look different. But for the sake of not, um, not messing up the flow, underline box, I don't know, up to you. Um, probably I would, if left to my own devices, just do that. Uh, maybe I would box. I think I might box them actually, and but box the whole thing. Don't box each individual ones. There you go. So it's set aside. So it's set apart. Oh, let's unfreeze the panes. Nice. So then that little nasty little line goes away. Looks good. Should be good. Uh, do the same here. Save it and submit it. Thanks, everybody.